Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping in for a ham shack chat. This time I'm going to take a look at the latest addition to my shack, right back here, a brand new Yesu FT891. And this, by the way, was also a Christmas present from my wife. This is going to be a tour of the connectors, buttons, and knobs, plus two switches that make up the interfaces for this rig. First, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this from this location, move it to another location, and we will take a look at the back of the rig with it completely disconnected. Then I'll reconnect everything, bring it back to life, and we'll go through the front of the rig. So, as mentioned before, this is my rig. This is the back of the main part of the rig, and this is the control head. And there are a few things that we want to look at. First thing that we're going to look at is plugging in the microphone. Now this took me a long time because I was simply looking for something labeled mic. Most of these connections are not labeled. The microphone is actually back in this area. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And you will notice two little notches. Got a notch here and a notch down here. You can feed this out of either one, but I don't like bending my stuff too much and prefer it on the side anyway. So we're just going to tuck this part of the microphone cord into that notch. The next thing, we're going to take a quick look here. And this control cord fits right there. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. Immediately above where you plug the cord in is a switch and it's labeled PH for phones or headphones and SP if you're using an external speaker. Uh, the reason they give this to you is if you have it set in speaker and you put on a set of headphones, it could be so loud that it could damage your ears. I leave it in phones all the time because I do use an external speaker, but sometimes I like to toss a set of headphones on there as well. So I have it set to phone. Now I'm going to connect this. So you'll notice two little arrows here. And then on the top of here, hope this shows up. You taught it. You've got two arrows right on the edge here and two arrows right on the edge there. You're going to line it up with the leftmost arrow on your main radio box and just slide it over toward the right and it'll click in. The button to release it if you ever need to is right here on the side and you're just going to pull that back and then you can slip it out. So here's the back of your rig. I am using an FC50 antenna tuner, a, tu a term that I really dislike. It's really not an antenna tuner. The only way to tune your antenna is to get out there and make some mechanical changes. It is, however, an impedance matching device. It takes the 50 ohm impedance out of your rig and matches it to make the antenna appear to have an exact 50 ohm match as well. That's a one-to-one -one SWR. This is your ground connection and your ground connection, it's important, you should have your station grounded. It helps to protect your station and also helps to improve how your station works. Next to it, right in this little slot and you go to the back of the slot, there's a switch. Now this is your firmware update switch and you use it when you're updating the firmware. So if you have to do that, you go in there, throw that switch, follow the instructions on the Yesu site. Next is our tune slash lin. Uh, so if you're using a linear amplifier and you have the appropriate cable, this is where you would connect that appropriate cable. I'm using it for the tune function, which I've got this cable which came with the FC50 down to here. And uh, that, that's where you connect your antenna tuner to your rig. 
This connector right next to it is your ready slash data. When I get around to putting an external sound card on here, and I will be using the SignalLink USB, this is where it connects. Next is your USB output, and this connects to uh, your computer on the other end using a standard cord. Now, if you have the optional remote keypad, which is an FH2, uh, that would plug right in here to this first one. Next is your key jack. The one with the little black circle around it is your key jack. And finally, the gold one here is for your external speaker, if you're using that. Last but not least, your DC power input from your power supply. Quick review of the connections on the FC50, if you have one. Ground connection, same as up here. And you, want, you do not want to daisy chain these. You want to each have a separate line run out to your, your grounding system. This is your Gazinta from the radio. Right next to it is your Gazata, and those are technical terms, to the antenna. And the control signal is right here between these two points. Now you can see that I'm back in the shack with the FT891 behind me here. We're gonna fire up the rig, go through all the front panel stuff. Okay, now for some front panel adjustments that you can make. And I'll try not to go too far off the plan. Uh, we're going to start with the obvious one. And we're going to press and hold this red button back here. And that turns on the rig. Now, once your rig's turned on, a quick press on this will bring up the lock. So you can see I can spin everything and nothing will happen. So I'm gonna take it off lock. Again, just a quick press. And we'll start up on top. Over here, we've got a button labeled OMB. Now you press and hold this key and that will write the frequency and other data presently displayed on VFOA to a memory location, the quick memory bank. Next to it is the MV key. It's got a little pointer carrot in there. And you press the key, and that will bring up all your memory channels. And then you can uh, select a memory that you want it, that to go into. And then uh, you, you press the key again, and it will store that in that memory. Next to that is the V into M, that key saves the data from the VFO to a memory channel. Again, you press it, brings up the memory channels, and you go through the same, same thing again. Now that next is the V slash M key, and this key toggles between the VFO and the memory system. So when the memory channel is recalled, the previously selected memory channel is displayed like this and you press it to clear it. Next is the AB key. This is gonna change the frequency and memory channel data of VFO A and VFO B. So you can see that I am sitting here, VFO B is lower sideband 7000. So if I do this, now I've uh, swapped that up and uh, it toggles between the two. Next to this is your band and mode key. This brings up the band. So you press it, and this brings up the band, and then you adjust which band you want by using the main tuning knob. And uh, we're gonna come back here to 14 megahertz, and we stayed there. Also press and hold that key, hold it, and it's gonna bring up your different modes, and you adjust that by spinning your main tuning knob. And the last button on the top is our fast key. And you press that to change. Right now I'm in slow. Press that and you'll see I've got an FST lit up over here. I'll just toggle that. So right now my tuning is like that. So let me just take it here and take it down. Just top to bottom. I'm gonna put it on fast and go from top to bottom. 
So you see there I've changed it quite a bit. When you're trying to fine tune this, this is great if you've gone in and you're sitting on 14.0 megahertz. Uh, then use the fast to get you up where you need to be. Take it off and give it a final little tune. Now we're going to go over to the knobs. The top knob here is actually a dual knob. The audio frequency knob is in the middle. So I'm going to turn up my audio frequency. And I'm going to try to find someone sending here. The outside of this is your RF. RF, or if you're in FM mode, it changes to a squelch. And we'll just tune this. And you can see I am tuning down my RF input. So that's, that's what that one does. Below this is your multi-use. So if you wanted to go in and do something, say, let me go to functions and you can use your tuner and you see the little carrot turns around. So I've selected break in. So I want to then press the key and you'll see I've turned my break in on. So when I key my radio, that red light indicates that I am transmitting. Each one of these A, B and C, I've got set up the way I want to. So my A key is currently set to do my tuner. So if I press that, let it go, you see I am tuning. The SCP is my scope, so I can do that. And now this is an interesting thing. If I go into sweep here, I'm going to get a f one sweep of the band. Now I'm going to press and hold. You'll see I get a continuous sweep, but you'll notice my audio has gone away. So you can tune in somebody, uh, you can tune in at somebody up here on the scope, but you're not going to hear them. So I'm going to press that one more time and get back. So the C button currently is showing Z in, which is your zero in, which will match what the radio is hearing with what you're sending. So watch the frequency and listen when I push Z. So you see, I've adjusted and uh, when I get around to doing the video about uh, CW, I'll show you some other tricks you can use. And that completes the buttons on the front. If you've been keeping track, you will notice that there are 12 connectors and 15 if you include the FC50. There are 13 buttons and four knobs plus two switches. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like. <laughs> please like me. By popping that thumbs up icon. Please share. Share. This video with your friends who either have one or are considering adding an FT891 to their shacks. Please. Drop a comment Questions, comments? down below with any suggestions for future videos. By the way, the next one in the queue is going to be a run through of all the base settings. Those are your buried menus. I'll be aiming for two updates a week, but real life may get in the way. Finally, please consider subscribing to this channel. What are we going to do? I've already subscribed. Where we chat about all things ham radio and for the immediate future, a whole lot about the FT-891. 73 until the next Hey Y'all, always at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out.